Hi there and welcome again. This is Jennifer McGuire. So I tend to create cards that have kind of a clean look to them, but I really like when I see others making cards that look a little more artsy. So I thought I would step out of my comfort zone today and create some cards that have kind of a messy watercolor look, but using stamps and inks or markers. These are super fast to do. Wasn't sure I'd like them. I know they're probably not for everyone, but I really had a ball making them. I've done these techniques in the past, but I wanted to pull them all together into one video. I also share tips for taking kind of these artsy backgrounds that I create and giving them a more clean look. So we'll first create the techniques, then we'll clean them up, and then we'll turn them into cards. I have lots of examples for you, and I hope something inspires you along the way. All of my cards feature this new Essentials by Ellen stamp set. That large floral cluster is great for trying out new techniques because it has detail and it's large, so it fills a card nicely. I just think it's beautiful. Now my first technique is to stamp onto wet cardstock. I'm using a Misty stamping tool today simply because I'm making lots of cards, but you don't need to if you don't want to. And I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I choose this watercolor paper because it's bright white, but any watercolor paper should work. Now to ink up my stamp, I'm using markers. These are Tombow dual brush pens, memento pens, or other water-based pens would also work. I've inked up one flower here with a pink ink, and then I'm going to do some of the other flowers with other colors. When using a brush tip marker like these, you want to use the side of the brush so you don't damage the tip. These tips work great for this technique. I've used them many times and they've held up nicely. The reason I chose markers for this is so I could get colors exactly where I want it, but I'll show you how to use an ink pad next. Once I've colored the whole stamp, I'm going to mist my watercolor paper about five times with water, so I just get some light water on the paper. I will then stamp into that wet paper. I'll hold my stamp here, take a sip of coffee, and while I'm holding it there for a little bit, the color is soaking into the water and bleeding just a bit so that I get a look that looks like soft watercolor, but I really just stamped it. The more water you use, the more bleeding you'll get. The less water you use, the more clean cut your image will be. I added some more water to the top just so I could get the color to move a bit more. And there you can see the final result of that one. And I'll show you um, how I finish this off in a little bit. Okay, next I wanted to show you how to do the same technique, but with distress ink. You can try other dye inks, but distress inks are especially good for this technique since they react with water and move around. So I am inking my stamp up with mini distress inks. You could use regular distress inks. These are just easier to use. And I am wetting my paper here. So I sprayed it a few times. And then I'll stamp onto that wet cardstock. This time I used a bit more water, so we're gonna see more movement of that color. Always use watercolor paper. It will give better results every time. And check it out how the color kind of bleeds along when it hits that water. I think that is so much fun. And I'll heat set this. You can dab away any color that has like a little bit too much or any puddles. But I think the end result is fun. And I'll show you how you can kind of clean it up and turn it into a card. Okay, another way to get the same look but to have a little bit more control is to mist the stamped image. So instead of misting before you stamp, you mist the paper after you stamp. Using the same stamp, I'm just inking it up with some distress ink. You could use the markers if you want to. I like the ink cubes because you can kind of get into the smaller areas than you can with the large distress ink pads. Once I've inked up my stamp, I'm going to go ahead and stamp it and then mist it right away. So I'm stamping onto watercolor paper. You could leave it like this if you want to, you can see it looks nice, but if you mist it, you get that color to move again. This usually gives softer results, so you can see that soft color starting to move. And you can add water with a paintbrush and move the color even more if you want to. Again, the more water you add, the messier look you'll get. Here you can see the movement of the color and the fun look that you get. Now the most controlled method is to actually mist the ink stamp. And this one is probably the most popular thing that people do. 
So you could use markers or you can use distress inks or whatever dye inks you may have. Here I'm using some distress inks to quickly apply color. Before I stamp it, I will mist the stamp. The more you mist it, the messier look you'll get. The less you mist it, the more clean look you get. So here I'll stamp that under the watercolor paper. I like to hold it there a bit and take a sip of coffee. And then you can see the kind of uh, hand-painted watercolor look you get. I really like this look because it looks like I painted it, but I have no talent in hand painting, so this is a great way to fake it. You can see the bright colors that I got also. Okay, now I think the most fun is when you do a combination of the techniques I just showed you. Apply the water to the paper before and after you stamp or add the water to the stamp. Just play around and decide what works for you and what result you like the best. Here I'm inking up my stamp with Distress Ink. I'm going to mist my paper lightly and stamp onto that, white, or that wet watercolor paper. I also misted my stamp a little bit too. So after holding that there for a few seconds, I can see the results. I decided I wanted a little bit more movement, so I'm going to mist the stamped image too. So I actually misted the paper before stamping, the stamp before stamping, and the paper after stamping. This way I can kind of control the areas where I want the movement to happen more. Remember the color will keep moving as it dries unless you heat set it and kind of freeze where the color is. If it bleeds a little too much, you can take a wet cloth and kind of absorb off some of that color like I'm doing here with a baby wipe. So if any of it splatters or bleeds a little too much, you can kind of wipe it up while it's still wet. And here's the result with that one. I think it's kind of crazy, but kind of fun at the same time. These looks are a real stretch for me. So I decided to take what I created and try to clean them up a little bit and make them more me. I had fun stretching out of my comfort zone, but I wanted to make sure that I was you know, creating cards that were true to my style. As I mentioned, if you get little spots where you don't want it, you can use a baby wipe to kind of wipe away some of the color. But what I found was the best way to kind of clean up that messy stamping is to heat emboss an image directly on top of it. So this is completely dry, putting it back into my misty, using my anti-static powder tool, and I'll stamp the same image on top with Versamark ink. So this will go directly on top of my first colored stamping. Stamping with Versamark ink, and this time I'm going to add white embossing powder to it. I found that my bead tray that I use for sequins and beads is great for scooping up embossing powder, and then I'm heat setting it. And that kind of cleans it up. It gives it this white outline with the color bleeding all around it. Now you get different looks depending on what embossing powder you use. Here I am again stamping with Versamark ink, directly on top of another one of my stamped panels. This time I'm using Hero Arts White Satin Pearl Embossing Powder. This is my favorite embossing powder because whatever color is behind it, you get that metallic look. And that is definitely my favorite for this technique. This time I'm doing black embossing. To do black embossing, I stamp with a black pigment ink and then I put clear embossing powder on it. This is also a nice clean look because you get that really dark defined edge with the color all around it. I tried several different embossing powders on the different backgrounds that I created. And I think my favorite was that satin pearl. And I'll show you more examples with that in a moment. Now with this particular one, I used a gold glitter embossing powder, but when I did the embossing, I covered up a lot of the color. So here I'm going back and adding more color in by scribbling the marker on my desktop, adding some water to it, and then picking it up with a paintbrush. I'm sticking to that messy look by just adding color here and there, not staying inside of the lines, and I end up with more color to the image. So you can go back and add more if you're a control freak like me. Now a completely different technique that you can get if you want a bit of a messy look but really want control is to stamp and then paint in the image. Here I'm stamping onto watercolor paper with a black pigment ink and adding black sparkle embossing powder from Ranger. After I heat set this, I can add watercolor to my image, but I'm going to keep the look very loose and quick. 
Now I decided to use markers. You could use whatever watercolor. So I put some marker onto my media mat and added water. And then I'm just loosely painting in the image. Now this media mat is from Tim Holtz. It's a glass surface. On the left, you have the black grid that I always work on. On the right is a white area that's perfect for mixing your colors. So I turned my camera so you could see the white area. So I scribble marker onto the glass, then add some water, and then paint it onto my project. You can also scribble the marker directly onto your watercolor paper and add just plain water, but that'll give you a brighter look. So I went ahead and did this with the different colors, and you can see I'm trying to keep everything very loose, and I'm not trying to stay within the lines. I was able to paint this in just a few minutes, which is a huge time saver, and in the end I was really happy even though it has that messy look to it. So now that we have these pieces ready, where we did the messy watercolor and kind of cleaned them up a bit, it's time to turn them into cards. On most of my cards, I use the new Essentials by Ellen Totally Random Sayings Volume 2 stamp set. I like the block words, the littlest block words, and the script that all can be teamed up together. I also use the Essentials by Ellen block word die set. These match up nicely with the stamp set I just showed you, and they're the perfect size to add to any card. Okay, so let's dive into some examples. I use those products I just showed you and a few additional ones. On this one, I trimmed down my floral piece and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card with some soft blue cardstock on top. I wanted to put a little white cardstock strip to cover where the two areas match just for a little defined clean edge. And to make sure it's straight, I use liquid adhesive and then I push my T ruler up against it. That way I can be sure it is perfectly straight. I'm keeping this one simple and adding a friend die cut. I actually glued three friend die cuts together so there's some dimension. And then I'm gluing it right on top. I added a few pretty pink posh sequins, not too many, because I want the focus to be on the sentiment in that fun watercolor technique. Now this is that satin pearl embossing powder and you can see how it gives a metallic pearl look on top of the color that is just beautiful. And that's my, definitely my favorite. Now here's the one where I did black embossing powder. So I did a black friend die cut on the top with a black cardstock strip. This one's a little more bold. It has a lot of crazy color going on, but I still think it is a fun way to stretch your style a little bit and try something new. And check out that bleeding of that color. It really gives a cool effect. And here's another example that I did in the same way. There's something fun about that bold black outline with the color kind of creeping out from it. These first few cards all have the same card design, which really saves time when you're making several. Now this is the first background that I made in this video. Since it has a softer look, I thought it'd be fun to stamp directly onto it. This is the stamp set that I showed you bo before with all the sayings on it. Now I like to put my sentiments on top of my focal image to kind of anchor them. I feel like it helps create that focal spot for the sentiment. So that's why you see the sentiment on top of the flowers. I feel like it works better for me instead of having the sentiment kind of float off to the side, but I'll show you that a little bit later in this video too. After I put this onto a card, I decided to stamp a faux stitch line along that pink edge. I'm using the Essentials by Ellen Plaid Maker stamp set. This is a new set that creates beautiful plaid backgrounds, really fun to use, but I'm just using the stitch line here. I'm using my creative corner, which is this little L-shaped piece in my Misty to help me make sure that I'm getting it straight before I close the door of my Misty onto it. Then I can remove the creative corner and stamp my dotted line and it really will be perfectly straight because I use that little creative corner. And there you can see the pink faux stitching. On this one, I added a few gems but you can see by uh, doing a soft watercolor stamped look, you can get a dark sentiment on top and it all pulls together nicely and very quickly. Okay, so for the next few examples, I combine die cutting and stamping directly on top of our watercolor stamped images. In this case, I'm die cutting a hole or a little window, a word window into our stamped panel. 
I'm using the block word die that I showed you earlier from the die set. I've got the hello here. I'm using my T ruler to make sure that I put it straight onto my cardstock, taping it in place, and then I'll run it through my die cut machine. Now I have the word hello die cut from my stamped panel. Next, I'll put this into my MISTI and I will stamp the word beautiful right below it. I find that the MISTI is very helpful for cards like this because I can be sure that I get it straight. At this point, I don't want to mess up the stamping since I've already done the background and the die cutting. So I stamp that with a crisp black ink and now I'm going to put black cardstock behind it. I cut down some craft foam pieces and put that behind the stamped panel so that it has some raised dimension. You could use foam tape too. I like having that die cut window be raised up because it creates fun shadows. Next I'm cutting a piece of craft foam to be super tiny and put it behind the O, the center of the O, and then I put liquid adhesive onto that foam tape so that I could move it around and position it just right and let it dry. I added that to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card and also added some gems. Here's a card that's very similar. This, these are actually first and second generation. So I, for the card on the left, I inked up my stamp, misted it with water and stamped it onto the white cardstock. For the card on the right, without re-inking it, I misted it again and stamped it and got a softer look. And both cards have the die cut word windows with stamp sentiments around it. This one says, marvelous friend, thank you. Now I lost the center of the R and D. I like to put them back in. I just, my eye likes that for some reason, but I lost it. So I just left them out. Here is yet another example. This one was done with distress inks. I like the bold color there. And I added a happy die cut window and then stamp birthday right up against it. I like these bold word dies and the cursive um, stamps next to it. They team up nicely and you can create lots of different sentiments. But look through your stash. You probably have some word dies and stamped sentiments that you can team together nicely. Okay, here's another example where I die cut the word beautiful and hello. For this one, I trimmed my panel down, added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card and added a gold cardstock strip along the edge, just for a little bit of definition. This time I want some dimensional hello die cuts on top. So I have the negative space here and I'm just taping it onto my card temporarily. This will be a placeholder for my little die cut letters so I can make sure I get them spaced nicely and straight. I'm putting glue into the open areas. Then I'm popping in some stacked die cuts. So I die cut this word three times from white cardstock and glued them together and now I'm just popping them into place. Now once that dries I can remove the guide and I have my white stacked die cuts perfectly positioned spaced even and straight. Now at this point I decided that hello was a little too soft and white so I decided to die cut the word hello again from black cardstock and glue that on top. So you can always change up what you want to. I actually did a bunch of die cutting with white cardstock upstairs while I was watching TV. And then I brought them downstairs all glued and stacked together. So I wasn't sure what I was going to end up using, what color. By having a bunch of white stacked die cuts put together, I could add whatever color I wanted to on top. Now this beautiful die cut word is actually from the coordinating die set that goes with the, this flower and I'll show you it in a moment. I stacked three beautiful die cuts together, they're all cut from white, and I cut the top of the B off. Now I'm adding a black one on top and this way I can glue this right up against the hello. The reason I cut the B off of the bottom was so that I could layer this right on top nicely. At this point, I decided the gold glitter strip was a little too much, so I just took it off. I changed things a lot when I craft, and I covered it up with a black cardstock strip, and I felt like that tied everything together nicely. On this one, I used a gold glitter embossing powder. This one looks better in real life because you can see that gold shine much better. And then we have the black raised sentiment on top. And by the way, this is the coordinating die set that goes with that large flower cluster. 
In that die set, you have the word wonderful and the word beautiful. And the beautiful die is what I use for this card. This next example shows some really fun watercolor. I did a lot of water on this. I like that it's softer though. And I have some white embossing on it. Then for the sentiment, I just die cut the word friend from black cardstock and glued that down. Then I die cut wonderful several times and stacked them together so it had a bit of dimension. Now for this one, I have some soft kind of messy watercolor and then I use that satin pearl embossing powder from Hero Arts to heat emboss on top. I stamp the words you are, then I have a stacked strong die cut glued next to it. These are from this stamp and die from Essentials by Ellen. I like that it's a small set so the price point is good and there are several different strong messages that you can create with the set and the die together. Here's another with the same kind of design where I trimmed a little bit off the side, added a gold cardstock strip, and a black strip in this case. I stacked the letters for friends and added some tonic crystal glaze on the top for shine. Underneath the word friend, I have a little sentiment strip where I white heat emboss the message, you have a good heart. This is from an older Essentials by Ellen stamp set called Good Fortune. These are all actually fortune cookie messages, but many of them can be used with other cards also, including this one that says you have a good heart. Then I added some gold little sequins in the background. And by the way, I just use regular gold embossing powder for that flower on top of the watercolor. Okay, so sometimes I like to create my own die cut word. And in that case, it's good to have alphabet dies. For this one, I'm using this new Essentials by Ellen Classic Block Alphabet Die Set. Now these are a good size, not too big, not too small, and nice and bold so they stand out. For my card, I stacked three letters together from white cardstock, and then put a glitter die cut on top. So I have glitter dimensional die cut letters. I used my T ruler to make sure I put them down straight onto my card. Then I stamped your the with a light gray ink and use foam tape to adhere that little strip above the word best. I also put a glitter cardstock strip right along the edge just for that little bit of definition and added some soft looking gems. I like this gold glitter dimension against that soft messy watercolor background. Now for this one, I have a really messy, colorful background that I did some satin white embossing powder on. Then I stacked some friend die cuts together and put a glitter die cut on top. Now this stands out a bit more in real life. I wish it looked better on the video. But again, I stamped that message, you have a great heart underneath it. Now my last example is this one where we did the messy watercolor into the embossed image. In this case, I just stamped my image right along the bottom. I felt like that flower was too bold to put anything on top of it. So if that's ever the case, you can just put your sentiment right underneath it, but try to put it close because it kind of all flows together nicely then. So I created a bunch of different cards today. I do have photos of all of these cards on my blog if you want a closer look. If you're interested in the supplies that I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description. I hope this video kind of encourages you to go out of your comfort zone and try something new. In the middle are two similar technique videos that you might want to check out. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. Have a great day and I hope you get some time to craft.